All right, let's talk a little bit about climate because it's become fairly clear to anyone paying attention that as we shift out of COVID mania, the system, the machine, is going to need more craziness to further lock down, further control us, further figure out ways to manipulate us, further figure out ways to keep us scared and angry and everything else. And I do sense, and I really do, that the COVID thing is starting to, uh, I would say, close up. Like, they're not gonna stop with the fear mongering and everything else, but I think a lot of people are finally just moving on. I really believe it. So they've gotta figure out something else because they can't have you walking around, not in fear, just thinking straight and looking around and seeing the world around you and making individual thoughts and choices for yourself. They can't have that, right? So they gotta keep the COVID thing going. So here's some video of Jen Psaki. She is back after she got COVID and had to take about 10 days off. She was vaccinated for COVID, somehow got COVID. Don't tell Joy Behar, that would be very upsetting. Uh, and I think what Saki says here kind of lends itself to the way that they are going to uh, increase the fear. Take a look. Just to be clear, and I know that's been a criticism, so that's why I said that, not an accurate one. Look, our view is that the rise in gas prices over the long term makes an even stronger case for doubling down our investment and our focus on clean energy options so that we are not relying on uh, the fluctuations and OPEC and their willingness to put more supply and meet the demand in the market. Man, it's so dangerous what she said right there. If you really listen to what she's saying, she's basically going, yeah, gas prices are rising. So we're going to have to do more of our green stuff, our recycling stuff, our renewable stuff. Now, I'm not against green things. I'm not against uh, doing all sorts of things related to, say, nuclear power. I know that scares these people, even though it's deeply, deeply safe. And we now know that, and they're trying to close all these nuclear power plants. Um, but what she's saying is, as gas prices rise, we're gonna have to do more of all that stuff that we've been trying to push down your throats with Build Back Better and our crazy bills and lunatic AOC and everything else. So wouldn't it behoove them then to actually raise gas prices? Wouldn't, if you really believe that you wanted to transfer everybody over to green power and the Green New Deal and their green dystopia, although they believe it's a utopia, wouldn't you then do everything you could to make gas as expensive as possible? Wouldn't you do everything you could to destroy the economy? If you're really saying we have to build back better, we have to completely change things. And by the way, you, this is what they're saying, right? They're telling us that what an opportunity there is after COVID to really look at how we do everything in America and fundamentally change things. And you silly, silly, decent liberals, the last 20 of you that thought that old Joe Biden was gonna stop it. He has ushered it in more than absolutely anyone else. Uh, so it would actually benefit the people who want us to get to this green thing that will never really work and is going to cause so many problems and cause actually all sorts of uh, depression for uh, poorer people. I discussed that with Jordan Peterson. Like the best way to help poor people is through cheaper energy resources, right? But that's not really what they're interested in. Check out my interview with Jordan Peterson from last week if you wanna get a little bit more on that. But basically she's telling you the part that she's not supposed to tell you. We're happy when gas prices go up. And perhaps we would do everything we could to make gas prices go up. And by the way, we're kinda happy when the supply chain gets screwed up because then that kind of proves that capitalism doesn't really work. So we'll have to figure out ways to maybe socialize uh, the system, right? We'll have to make sure that our infrastructure system has far more government involvement and much less uh, capitalist competition. That would make sense. So they're telling you what they're doing. And if you don't think that's enough, we, we saw this video over the weekend. I saw this one. This is the Minister of Environment and Climate Change of Canada. You know, we've been going through this big, climate conference. These people all fly in their private jets across the world. Most of them, like Barack Obama, live in $11 million estates in Martha's Vineyard right on the water. You'd think they'd move inland, but they don't. It's very weird. Uh, well, Stephen Bildbo, who is the Minister of Environment and Climate Change in Canada, uh, had a, something very interesting to say about climate. And uh, I think you'll see the intersectional nature of this stupidity. Mr. Chair, I would like to say that Canada strongly support strong languages on the rights of indigenous peoples and the inclusion of their traditional knowledge in, in the fight against climate change, as well as the protection of human rights uh, as part of this text. Thank you very much, Mr. Speaker.
Okay, I have no problem with indigenous people, right? That's just fine if you your people came from a certain place and you're still there and you're doing your thing. But do you see by the way they combine all of these things? Climate change has absolutely nothing to do with indigenous people. He talks about the traditional knowledge of indigenous people to fight climate change. Is there something that an indigenous person by their birth knows more about climate change than say the average scientist who perhaps has been studying it, who maybe didn't come from the place that they live on now, like most of us and most of our families and most of our history, most of man's history is a history of people moving all over the world and all sorts of wars have been fought and civilizations have uh, grown and civilizations have crumbled. Like, is there anything, is there anything? He says the traditional knowledge of indigenous people. It's a completely nonsensical statement, but they love it. They love it. Again, they just clap on it. Oh my God, indigenous people, we like indigenous people. Traditional knowledge, we like traditional knowledge. Somehow it's against capitalism. We like being against capitalism. Ugh, these people are so boring. Anyway, I tell you all of this just to say, uh, start watching out for this. The next thing that's coming is the climate stuff. There will be climate lockdowns. They will not want cars on the road. They will tell you to stay in your house and use less heat when it's cold and use less air conditioning when, it, when it's hot and a whole bunch of other stuff. It's just on the way. I'm gonna fight it, why not?